I am sure that the content of this video will spark some debate as I will be taking a view that some of the science community disagrees with. However, I will lay out the science theories behind my opinion. One thing we see a lot in our science fiction, especially in Star Wars and Star Trek, are alien species that have many human characteristics or even indistinguishable from humans. The most obvious reason for this is that human actors are required to fill most of these roles and to make alien characters relatable to us. In the science community, many claim that aliens will most likely look nothing like us. Even though xenobiology is not yet a fleshed out field in our academia, I believe it really should be, with all the recent discoveries of exoplanets lately. Now here you can see Neil deGrasse Tyson outlining his position. The appointment I have are Hollywood aliens, and I don't know who to blame for this, Hollywood or biologists that advise them. Hollywood aliens are way too anthropomorphic for me. Even E.T., he had a head, shoulders, arms, Okay, he had three fingers instead of five. There's still fingers at the end of a hand. He had legs, he had feet. That's human. And look at the diversity of life on Earth to draw from if you want to think about the ways of being alive. I'm just so disappointed. The first thing we must do is establish what kind of life form is not only intelligent, but constitutes a spacefaring civilization as advanced or more advanced than our own. It all comes down to the ability to build stuff. To build stuff requires tools. To use tools requires physical limbs capable of moving and manipulating objects. So far the best biological mechanism we've seen for this is hands, preferably those with opposable thumbs. Life forms with multiple claws and tentacles are also good candidates for manipulating objects, but so far hands are the best we've seen. For hands to be effective, they should come in pairs, and they need to be off the ground and free to maneuver in any direction with speed and efficiency. This is why humanoids must stand upright, so that they can move their hands forward, back, up, down, left, right. You can also make the case that bipedal locomotion, meaning using two legs, is very energy efficient compared to using four or more over long periods of time. Another feature important to manipulating objects is binocular vision, with the eyes facing forward, which allows humanoids to have depth perception and judge the distance of objects with fine precision. People who understand how the body moves, especially dancers, martial artists, and workers who do a lot with their hands, can appreciate the abilities of the human form. Rather than taking millions of years to adapt to the environment, humanoids have the ability to adapt the environment to them, for better or for worse. You'll see here that Neil deGrasse Tyson and Richard Dawkins continue their discussion. But I mean, it, it's, it's a genuinely interesting point that I think biologists haven't thought about enough, is to go around the animal kingdom counting up the number of separate arisings of something, because that does tell you something about what you might expect elsewhere in the universe. You'd expect eyes. You might expect echolocation. Um, hypodermic syringes, stingers, um, about a, a couple of dozen... Uh, I'm talking about independent dependent evolutions now, if you look about spiders... Our version scorpions. of that would be called guns, yeah. yeah. About, called what? Uh, our version of the hypodermic stinger would be called a gun. Yes, right? okay. To sting yeah. someone with... Um, so but I'm talking about an, a, something that penetrates the body and injects poison. Yeah. And, and that's... So it, that's an interesting question. And another relevant point is you look around the world at different island continents and say, how many times, how, how similar are they? You've got Australia, the Australian mammals, for example. And there are very, very powerful similarities between Australian mammals, which evolved entirely independently of mammals in South America, independently again of mammals in Asia and Africa. And so, again, that gives you a kind of a clue for how predictable evolution is. Other worlds are going to be very different. But we perhaps shouldn't write off the possibility that the Hollywood um, aliens are not, they might not be not that unimaginative. Now what Dawkins is referring to here is called convergent evolution. Convergent evolution means that two totally separate environments can spawn life that evolves to be extremely similar. Here is a prime example of this. Now what does this creature look like to you? It looks very much like a hummingbird, doesn't it? Are you sure that's a hummingbird? Now look closer. Closer? This is no hummingbird. It's a moth. Hemeris thispi, to be exact. The hummingbird clearwing moth. Having evolved in an environment where there are many flowers from which to get nectar, these moths move and look like hummingbirds, since this 
is a very efficient manner of thriving in such an environment. Another example of this that I like is the mantis shrimp. Since the method of catching prey in this way is very efficient, although shrimp and mantids evolved from very different creatures, they have converged in their evolutionary paths. And there are many, many, many other examples of this that occur on this planet. And modern astronomy has concluded that there are planets that are similar to our own out there, and that they are not very uncommon. The question is whether another species has evolved on those planets that is capable of manipulating objects and building tools, and if so, I believe that these life forms will look kind of familiar to us. Now, unless the planet that they evolved on is almost completely like ours, of course there will likely be some differences. For example, in a higher gravity environment, humanoids would need to have a lower center of gravity and different musculature to move around efficiently. On planets where there is less light, they would probably need bigger eyes, and if it's colder, a little bit more fur for protection from the elements. But ultimately, it is the physics of the environment that drives the evolution of these life forms. And physics is universal. We can expect to see convergent evolution occurring all over the universe. Another really interesting thing to think about is that due to the gravity of our planet, life forms here with exoskeletons don't reach the size of humans. The biggest exoskeletal life forms have reached about the size of a dinner plate or so. Endoskeletons provide more mobility, but imagine in a lower gravity environment, perhaps a third or so of the Earth's like on Mars, how large these life forms with exoskeletons might become. Does it make you a little nervous that a praying mantis reminds you of an alien? Well, perhaps it should, because it's a good bet that there are giant mantid analogs on some other lower gravity planets. So let's be sure to warn our descendants who visit these planets to be careful of them. Hopefully some digital archaeologist reviewing the ancient archives of the 21st century internet would delight in the fact that this video accurately predicted giant mantids on other planets. Thank you for watching, space friends. As a fan of science, this is my first attempt at making a science-based video. If it does well, I look forward to doing more speculative videos about the nature of alien life. Say in the comments and share if you like this one and would like to see more.